Major cities, including my city of Chicago, are failing massively to provide adequate housing for the increase in asylum seekers that we've seen. Now, asylum seekers, including children, Pregnant women, the elderly, disabled are being forced to sleep on the floors of office buildings and police stations, and in some cases, in tents outside. This is happening in Chicago. It's now winter in Chicago. We got two inches of snow just a few days ago, and men, women, and children are being forced to sleep in tents outside. It is completely unconscionable. So let's get into some more of the facts from Associated Press. More than 20,000 migrants have arrived in Chicago since last year. Uh, sorry, excuse me. Largely under the direction of Republican Texas Governor Greg Abbott. More than 3,000 are living inside airports and police stations while they await shelter placements, including in park district field houses, although some have moved into tents and adjacent streets and vacant lots due to overcrowding. The end goal, officials say, is permanent independent housing, but they are dragging their feet and making that happen. Now, Chicago Mayor Brandon Johnson has proposed winterized tents like in New York and more shelters to house the migrants who are sleeping in police stations, airports and on the streets. Volunteer organizations who have provided the bulk of meals and clothing say they're now giving winter survival tips too. Layering clothing is a novel concept for most of the migrants who are used to warmer climates. Temperatures dip to the low 30s, around zero degrees Celsius by Wednesday. Many are from Venezuela, where a political, social, and economic crisis has pushed millions of people into poverty. At least 7.3 million have left the country, with many risking a dangerous route by foot to the United States. And again, that can the conditions, particularly the economic conditions in Venezuela, the United States played no small part in exacerbating them and creating this crisis in the first place. Now, um, Glycy Martinez is one of them and highlighted this struggle. Martinez, 27 from Venezuela, has lived for three weeks in a tent outside a Chicago police station with her two children, including a nine year old who is blind. They rarely leave the tent because of the cold. When the storm hit Tuesday, they went inside the police station, but it was too full. They walked to a nearby Target store for warmth. The snow caught us unexpectedly, Martina said Wednesday. We didn't know it was going to snow. Johnson's administration has opened over a dozen more shelters since he took office in May. City officials have scouted locations for winterized tents, but details are sparse. Johnson estimates Chicago will spend roughly 255 million on the migrant crisis in 2023. Johnson told reporters Wednesday that his goal was to still get migrants into shelters by winter. He said, I'm working every single day to create spaces to move people out of police stations and do it in a way that is dignified. It's cold, but winter is not here yet. It absolutely is here. It was here on Wednesday when he made that statement. And Brett, I live by one of these migrant tent cities. It's despicable, the treatment of them. It's despicable that there are Chicagoans protesting them, not protesting the conditions they're being put in, but protesting that they are in their line of sight. It repulses me. Yeah, it's uh, you get a lot of not in my backyard folks. Um, and there's a lot of rhetoric people throw around like, you know, this is everybody thinks they know how to be empathetic until they actually have to be. Um, and some people, it's very simple. They're like, yeah, I just talked the talk. It's time for me to walk the walk and deliver on these promises. People who run a city that say that they're amenable to this uh, influx of migrants when they get an influx of migrants should probably follow through on being amenable to that influx of migrants and handle it. Um, I understand though, in the meantime, there is it is difficult to handle it. And so that is the trick of most politics. And I don't mean trick like in a disingenuous way, but that's like the that's the challenge of most of politics where you have to find a way to message effectively and convince people with actual actions and message with words that are reflective of reality and tell them that I am working hard to make sure that I can follow through on the promise that I made by saying that this place is open to that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and I mean the charities are taking in, you know, the churches are taking in a lot of migrants as many as they can, but they'll be the first to, you know, go and protest and say we are not a solution, right? We are a stopgap measure. The solution has to come from government, and I'm hoping that it will very soon.
For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.